Hiya, girls. We are Barney and Lukey, and we are the hot young visionaries behind Truffle Pig Wigs. And this is Cliffhangers, the unofficial, unrequested, and unhinged RuPaul's Drag Race recap show. The views and opinions expressed on Cliffhangers are from a couple of women who just love drag and have zero real business judging it. If you are not a fan of red hot acidic critique, turn back now. Bing, bang, bong, <laughs> sing, sang, song, ding, dang, dong. UK Han, let me introduce. He put the hoe in guano. It's Barney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and please let me introduce Miss Lukey Luck. And if she was any more inbred, she would be a sandwich. Oh, cute. <laughs> um, what's guano? It's batshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes they like they make. They have special, very expensive coffee that um, yeah. the bats eat, and then they use it from that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard, I do know the word, but mm. I just couldn't. I thought it was. Something, I did think it was something to do with feces, which well. is why I laughed so hard. <laughs> um, well, let's better get on with it, please. So, morning glory. Lawrence won. Sister, sister, and Ginny were in the bottom, and then Ginny walked, and then we're back in the workroom, and Lawrence. Still trying to piece myself together from from our loss of Ginny. Lawrence very angry, saying that she tapped out, which I don't think she did. This was going to be my first question to you. Do you how do you feel about queens deciding that they have had enough? I think that's fine. That's within their rights. They're humans and they have feelings and yeah. emotions. <laughs> don't hop on Twitter and talk about trying to hashtag be kind when actually when someone <laughs> prioritizes their own mental health and then. Then you're like, how dare you have insulted Rue? It's like, <laughs> honestly, please. One thing that really struck me is sister was like, am I here by default thoughts? Well, yeah, you would. <laughs> that would be playing on your mind, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, 100%. Like, would I still be here? Did she make a decision about my future? Mm. And do you think, honestly, do you think Ginny could have turned to party? I honestly have no idea. I've never seen her... Um, do a number, so I couldn't possibly I comment. I like she would have been really fucking weird. Well, yeah. She really would have brought some. That's a given. Yeah. Um, I'm very obsessed with a horse straight away, just being like... <laughs> so, <laughs> the she, gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> literally, she just don't fucking stop, does she? Um, um, you know, when Veronica was like, bitches, beware, you don't know me, I just thought, if if possibly anyone else had had said that, that would have been like iconic, memeable, like quotable, put it on a t-shirt, but... There would just seemed a real kind of lack of oomph I feel that like came Veronica with Green, it. A lot of the time, sounds like she's like reading. She's like thought of lines in her head that she thinks will be good, mm. and then the execution of them is just very cruise ship. She is a cocky slag, though, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so can you believe she is so silky soft? But I do love that you do see the harder side of taste. It's the truth, Ruth. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> And then Rue does the corona statement. I would have been freaking the fuck out if I was in there. Straight away, you'd be thinking about, like, how's this affected my family, my loved ones, my friends? Like, that's fucking scary. It's like, oh, you're they... nice. I didn't even think of that at all. I would no, just be thinking didn't. about me. <laughs> and my stardom. <laughs> my stardom. But yeah, that was fucking crazy. I desperately need to know whether there were any rules set when they came back. I'm, I'm sure they should have just been like, you need to leave your stuff here. And when you come back you're not allowed to have worked on it. Like, you're not allowed to bring extra stuff with you, extra wigs. Like, I mean, obviously from a TV perspective, it's a great idea because it's like, the bigger and better their drag, the the bigger the TV, Sure. the more impressive the TV show will be. But I'm just really surprised that they even let them, like, bring new shit back. That seems mental. We've got to give the gals something to do during a seven-month lockdown. Let them sew. Let the gals sew. (laughs) So then we're back in the workroom obsessed with the double entrance. Love that they got to do another little walk-in. Yeah, boy drag? So, so cute. So cute. Whose boy drag looks were you loving? Love to Hora's little blazer and oh blazer God, and a pump. So cute. Blazer and a white pump. Because you know whores do wear a white pump. <laughs> well, obviously this was a very premature thing, but I was like, it looks like she's had a bit of a refresher. <laughs> and then suddenly it's like, who are these women coming in here? She looks like she cut a tennis ball in half and glued it to her face. <laughs> obsessed with them lovely dermals, Bims. Absolutely obsessed. But it seems like surge was the word. S- truly. Well, <laughs> what I, else are you going to do? I know. And also as well, I loved that sister was like, oh, now I've got some money. It's like, bitch, what have you been doing in quarantine? Hasn't everyone, poor Veronica Green is curled up in fetal because she... Like, <laughs> in <that's>, fetal? <laughs> like... The fecal fetal. She, what, you're out here, like, making money? Well, yeah, because normally, mean? like... Just on, getting surged. <laughs> on All Stars, at least they've, like, done their season. They've been, like, touring the world for at least six months. Like, yeah. yes, you've got money, but, yeah, 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 how the hell have these all got money? Um, question. A horror came in 
And she was like, do you carry a lunchbox? I carry a lunchbox. What is it from? I don't know. I know a lunchbox is a term for the junk of a... From? Polari. What? The old gay language. No. Wow. Look at the inability to learn anything about gay people on this on this channel. Oh, God, I deal uh, with them enough in my day to day, Barney. What did she say? Do you carry a lunchbox? I don't know. I didn't even notice it. So. Do you carry a lunchbox? <laughs> it's, it's from something. Oh, that's so Raven. Sure. <laughs> Sure. Um, it's actually this mystical, long forgotten gay language. <laughs> it's that's so Raven. Okay. <laughs> no, but you just said it means it does mean about dick, but that's from Polari. Sure, sure, sure. Have you sure. heard of Polari? No. So, you, you know, do you like, mean Pilates? <laughs> <laughs> no, Polari is like, so it's like an old language that they used to speak when it was illegal to be gay. God, the children are learning today. Oh, they? <laughs> pop the corns and teach the children. <laughs> So Polari is like an ancient, an ancient language from the early 1900s. Um, the, when it was illegal to be gay, that there was a way to like communicate between gay people. Like uh, friend of Dorothy. Exactly. And um, so there's like things like ogles, is like your eyes. Um, like there's loads of things like bonavada means like beautiful face. Surely um, that's from like a European thing. Bon- well, they're all just like words that are mm. stolen in like basket. Oh no, it's basket that means dick. That you'd be like, oh, bone a basket means like nice, nice dick. Um, yeah, it's just like a bringing full... that into me, Lexicon. Yeah, it's like a full language. Okay, now, so now next week fa- we're going to do our solely. zingers and mingers in Polaris. <laughs> um, yeah, I was like, all I need to do now is find a seventy-five-year-old gay man to talk Polari with. <laughs> Did you see the meme that was like taste dragging in Davina De Campo? <laughs> 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 oh, taste just bounded in like a little puppy. Oh. Like so cute, lovely outfit, so full of energy, so happy to be there. It was actually a really nice vibe, wasn't it? All the yeah, like yeah, back, yeah. like summer holidays. Well, I think as well. Like remember that some of these queens actually haven't been able to perform. Mm. So for some of them, it's like they haven't. They probably haven't been around drag. They've probably like literally just been at home. Like especially for the Scottish queens that have been in lockdown for the full seven months. Like obviously Bimini's talking about like they've been able to perform in London and stuff. But like that's not the reality of everyone. That, that should have been the reality though. That's why we're the worst country in the world. That's why Scotland is much better hmm. because they did. Shout out to Nicola Sturgeon. Whoa, whoa. Um, <laughs> and what about Tia saying I kept the same hair for continuity purposes? It's like I don't think that's the shout you think it is, Tia. <laughs> I mean, at least there is a reason behind the treason. My favourite thing she said in this bit was, new teeth, who dis? <laughs> <laughs> but how practical is that flipper? Like, it looks I, we need crazy. To get, we need to get the Vivian on the pod because that's their impact. Mm. Who's our lovely gal with the clip-on pony? Who, who's our lovely... TKB, Miss she, Trinity K. Bonet. Yeah, she's the original flipper queen, isn't she? Is she? From what I know, like a flipper is like a much more cost-effective way of like getting veneers or whatever um, because it's just like, it's basically like false teeth. Yeah. It's just like a whole piece. So I think you use sort of like polydent or whatever to like fix it, but I think it just goes over your normal teeth, which is why often the flippers look sort of like... Quite TikToks. far out. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, there was I one bit on the runway. Teeth. No, 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 not at all. But I just think she's she's a love appeal girl. I love it, don't I? Yeah. Um, I think we really the thing we really need to talk about. Yeah, I'm looking at you right in the eye. RuPaul's wig. RuPaul's. <laughs> <laughs> An ode to Ginny Lemon, I assume. hundred percent. But I also saw someone on Twitter say, I believe it was the um the icon that is Sean Faye was like, wake up people. He's clearly trying to cover a facelift. Like everyone's <laughs> been getting surgery in. <laughs> Holy shit, C V got V G. C V? Do you mean V G Coronavirus? Do you mean V G got C do you want to say it again? No, coronavirus got Veronica. Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't want to do a second take, thank you, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do a spit take. <laughs> At least we know she's fine now, so it's Scale kind of, of one to okay. ten, how sad are you to see Veronica Rook Green go? I'm always, even with even with Eureka, I'm a bit sad when they have to go through things like this. But you got your ticket to season 13, bitch, and you've got a whole other year to get even better and get 100%. more clothes. So I think it's still fair fucks, isn't it? 100%. Um, I just, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Truth, truth. Deal with it. I'm exactly the same. I just feel like it's... I, 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 my heart goes out to her so much because it must be so hard to deal with. Um, so sad to see VG go, but... Well, that does mean... Onwards and upwards. Nelly the Elephant times three enters. True. I I knew what was going to happen here. Of course you did. <laughs> but did. I was still so excited. Oh. The girls are back! I just, I just love to see the girls. Yeah. Love it. Who would you have brought back? And then after they pleaded their case, who would you have brought back? Did it change? My heart was Cherry same, immediately, same, same, but then same. my head was Joe because I thought, oh, really? just because, but I went with my heart, but my head did think firstly, like, it should be Joe. He's had the least time to It's very think. chilling to hear you talk about this, this heart that you speak of. 
It's a black heart. <laughs> Why gotta be black? How would you plead? I don't know. I wouldn't really want to like beg. I'd... I knew you were going to say that. Like, do you know what? Begging's not really me. <laughs> like, if you, yeah, you'd maybe cry. I'd go to the cherry. No, thing. I think you'd cry. I think you'd want it so much that you'd be like, do you, in your talking head, you'd be like, do you know what? I'm just going to get in front of these bitches and just tell them like, I'm not really one to beg. And then you'd burst into tears and be like, I just really want to come back. But like, I only really cry at happy things, like seeing Beyonce or. Oh my god, that is the touching this thing you've ever said. <laughs> listen, listen. Oh my god, it's like a gay man lives inside her, isn't it? Honestly, the happiest times of my life, touching cracker and seeing Beyonce. I can't help who I am, but no, I wouldn't be crying. She was born this way. How would you have pleaded? Exactly how Cherry Valentine went. I would have just been like, I deserve to be here. You wanna be on top? Yeah, I mean, who's topping any of them? <laughs> I would be like you know that I'm competition, and if you think that you are the best person in this competition, then you would beat the best, and so you need to beat mm-hmm. me. Because I think that that's the best way to go, because it's like, it appeals to people's ego, that you're saying, like, if you if you do honestly believe this shit that you're talking about, how you're going to wipe all the girls home, then wipe me. That's what that's where I stand. Wipe the girls home. Wipe the girls out, is what I mean. <laughs> If you're gonna, I'm gonna wipe that girl right out of my hole. Um, you're gonna wipe that hole. Sure. Little kid, but frontline nurse. So. Right. Let's move Sponge on. Bath. So then RuPaul announces that the main challenge for this week will be the Ruru Vision Song Contest. <laughs> We love a bit of Eurovision, don't we? I was going to say, literally, the, on the group chat, we were, uh, as soon as this came out, I was like, can we please this year have a Eurovision party and all dress up as different countries um, and also have food from around the world. I just love Eurovision. Mm. What a fantastic night. Um, and Am I, is this the Mandela effect? Or did you used to be able to like ring in and vote? I feel like when I was little, I could call up and vote. Really? Yeah. But I don't know I if, don't... That is, if I'm Mandela affecting. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't know. We'll put the answer on the gram. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, but just obviously, Eurovision is such a special time, <laughs> and only made special by just how shit we are at it. That's what yeah. I really love. Uh, shout out to your favourite Eurovision performance. UK. Yeah. Gina G. Oh, just a little bit. <laughs> Mine. I need an honourable mention to Javine's "Touch My Fire," but not her as a person. We see you. She's a woman she, hater. Yeah, Alicia Dixon, we love you. Uh, and Jamelia, we love you as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, she really is a slag girl. Uh, so Lawrence, who won last week's challenge, and Joe, who's just come back from the brink, are the joint team captains. Yeah. And Hora is picked last with a face like a donkey's minge, according <laughs> to Taste. <laughs> yeah, it was so good. How would you vote for your group? Would you go, right, I'm going to vote my friends because we'll have a good working relationship? Fuck or that. Are you like, right, this is Eurovision. I know Tace is a great dancer. I will take Tace. I'm Coco know... Montrese picking Alyssa Edwards oh, 100%. for the ballet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I also... And I would 100% be Team Lawrence oh my... if I had a choice. Oh, like, not even. A... <laughs> I would, even if even if Joe p- picked me, I would just ignore him. Um, <laughs> one thing also, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say this. Why do people say, this is my challenge? It goes down like a fucking lead balloon. Like, who has ever been like, this is my challenge? And then they win. Who said that? Tia. Oh, <laughs> She's like, I sing, I perform, I dance. This is my challenge. It was like... Well, so that's I... meant to be your challenge. <laughs> <laughs> when will your challenge come, Tia? <laughs> um, it just, every single time, I just, the cocksureness, I, it's not for me. Um, Especially if they catch you saying that on camera, they're going to make truly. damn sure you're not winning. And also, I know this is like a really simplistic way to look at drag and I understand that like Instagram and the conflation of like the fashion world and stuff has given birth to Queen's that do not centre their drag around performing. But just every single time that Lawrence is like, oh, I can't sing or dance. It's like, I don't think that all queens need to be able to like, be full musical theatre, triple threats. But it just blows my mind that, that like, it panics him so much. Mm. He's like, fuck, I've got to sing, I've got to dance. It's like, you know this is part of it, bro. I know. Maybe that was a bit homophobic, broing him. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I felt uncomfortable. Also, Lawrence... Blue grey brows? Question mark. Have you been noticing these? They're getting yeah, like yeah, yeah. they're they're so like neutral tone and like they're just it's such a strange colour for his face because he's quite pale already and then he's got Yeah, it's weird, it's always like they've been like colour corrected and that's yeah, what's yeah. left. <laughs> yeah. One thing I really did not like is which is like a weird shade to be coming from Tia, is when Tia was like, What are they gonna do when they all wanna wear bikinis? I just I I didn't like that. I wish they hadn't kept that in the edit. It wasn't funny and it was quite nasty. It was yeah, just like, it's... imagine her in a bikini. It was like, okay, she's already spoken on day one about like 
her lack of body confidence and how she feels. And then she even made a joke about when she came in and now you're like, oh my God, all of them girls would look so great in a bikini and then there'd be you. It's like, no, that's not, that's not it. I just, I, that. What? Is that, what? I thought she was just kind of saying, oh, like those dickheads are just going to be dressed in little stuff. I didn't think she was like calling out Lawrence for being fatter than them. She said, the, the comment that she made was, I wonder what Lawrence is going to do when they all want to wear bikinis. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, that's very nasty. Horrible, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I just and I didn't think that that was Tia's vibe, especially ever really making comments about what someone else wears. No. <laughs> seems, uh, seems strange. I can't say. Did you think, on the walk round, the only thing I've put is, did you think that Joe, I mean, I get it that like they're months and months behind, but did you think that Joe was like really working overtime with Rue? I think he's always working overtime. <laughs> I'd love, like, a little bit when, um, in the, like, lockdown mini episode thing, I felt like there were a couple of, like, whispers of what he's actually like when he's yeah, not kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. doing, yeah, literally Nosferatu is great for him because I picture him just kind of sideways talking over his shoulder. Like, he's, like, constantly, like, putting on this, like, in affected, yeah, <laughs> thing. So I just feel like he's, al- he's always yeah. doing also, the most. constantly referring to him as he. Mm. It's because there's a male first name. Do you refer to Derek Barry as who? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> because he doesn't do drag. Um, hey, this is a Derek Barry stan pod now <laughs> since the Vegas show. Um, so then we head into recording and we get to see our first glimpse of the gorgeous Emily K. I thought his little face looked gorgeous. So, so cute. cute. Like a go- yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Love the beat on him. Um, and then gorgeous little space buns. Lovely. So we start with Team Banana Drama, who is to step into the recording studio. Thoughts? I just cannot with... It was the same with Kimora Hall doing the tree um, and Joe... Like when people are literally saying you have to go blam 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 and you're going blam blam blam. Like how can you not hear the difference like over and over again? It drives me crazy. I think don't underestimate how much like fear and panic can just mask you. Like sometimes, especially like you're someone that does have an understanding of music and like you have you have an ear for it. But like if you don't already and then you're panicking, like because you're nervous and scared, like you just they probably can't hear what they're singing at all. It's tough. That must, I really think, like, to not be able to sing and also to not be able to dance on Drag Race is so exposing. You like, better be funny bitch and you just can make, fuck make up a garment. That good. Like, you can fuck up a garment and hot glue your way out of a situation. But, like, if you're in a dancing, singing challenge and you can't do either, that must be fucking terrifying. Mm. Um, Worst case scenario. I put... Ellie, really bring in the right energy of all of them. Out of all four of them, she was the best for me. But just very basic. I didn't, I, I didn't, I really felt like she'd written a list of like things that drag queens say. Mm. Like, I'm going to slay the house down, work boots, my mouth. Like it's just like. I was putting it down to youth. You can't put it down to youth though, because she's on, the, she is here with the girls. It didn't really say anything. It didn't tell me anything about Ellie Diamond. It didn't, it was all just sort of like very blanket drag queen statements. It didn't. I like, must agree because I cannot even remember what she it did. It was just literally like, I'm going to come through the door and slay them down. And Yes, work. mama, yeah, take that like, crown. Sorry, yeah, literally. Are we songwriters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but do we need to put, do we need to do the, the response to UK home? Oh my God. Not UK home. <laughs> Um, I'm not UK. <laughs> EU, hun. Um, <laughs> then we go over to United Kingdoms. And what I love, we love to see it, is Ahura can laugh at herself. Like, she really comes across as someone that would be very, very, very serious. This is why I believe that the UK uh, drag race is so good, is because when you have characters like Ahura and Tace who are serving you beauty and fashion, so often that drag queen takes themselves really seriously. Mm-hmm. But then you get into something like the recording challenge and both Taste and Ahura are so like, they're just so stupid. Like they're just, they don't care about making themselves look like idiots. They just want to have fun. And yeah, I the just, girls are just having a hoot. Yay. And I just loved that, like, especially Ahura, because obviously Ahura's had a real, real trajectory on this show. And I just think that she was like, just making herself look really dumb, which I loved. Yeah, I've written creasing at a horror, ding, dang, dong. <laughs> and I love as well that like before you know the song, it just makes absolutely no fucking yeah. sense. She's like, big, bad boy! Sorry for the ding, ding, dong! <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just love that. And I loved Taste doing this. That, that's cool! <laughs> well, Taste wants redemption from the last... Truly. And, but just, again, just like, having a fucking ball. That's all I care about. I just thought, uh, Bimini is a fucking monster and I love her. Mm. 
And then we head over to the rehearsals on the main stage. Do you like it when they have a rehearsal leader? So that when there's a dance captain like uh, one Jamal Sims or who's that lovely French gay one that we love? Oh, uh, the rude one. Yanis Marshall. Yanis! Oh, oh my God, I love him! Yeah, it's so fucking cute. And do you remember as well, back in like season three or four or whatever, they used to have that like guy with like really long curly hair. I him love him. The fiercest little white man someone called him yeah, with that moustache. I can't remember who he is. And obviously they've had Todrick, but... The less we say runner, about him. Runner sound. I'm still a piece of garbage. <laughs> do you prefer when they have a dance captain and a choreographer or whether it's self-run? <sighs> I like a bit of both. I like I them love, both. I love the tension of them having a choreographer, a dance captain, because it's like they are all on best behaviour and they're all, it really amps it up. A, mm. I feel like when, but you do get, when it's their own rehearsal, you do get with the squabbling. Exactly. I love a squabble. We do, we do be like A gobble and a squabble. Hello. Um, I was very into Tia in that thigh high boot and crew neck combo. Okay, love the okay. rehearsal look. Look at, you, look at you shouting out a fashion choice by Tia. <laughs> ridiculous it's like veronica in the rats one it's like top <laughs> half of my body is this very casual yeah. boy next door and then the lower half is like that- sex demon <laughs> <laughs> yeah um my main thing to say about this is you know the energy that i bring to rehearsals like don't dumb it down like i am from the school well, that was their mistake wasn't it 100 well, i'm from the school of choreograph it and you've got overnight to catch up like don't dumb your shit down to the lowest common denominator pull them up to the level you want it. That's I like taste. Yeah, 100%. Like, taste went in there. Taste, that is exactly the energy that I would bring. I'd be like, I'm a choreographer. Lay the choreo down. If you have any problems, I'm here all night for you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, and I will go through this until the very last second with you and we will rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. But... Us three are dancers. You need to catch up to us. We can't make this easier for you. That's what I would bring. It just it blows my mind that they would be like, are we going to make our performance shitter so that you feel more comfortable? It's like, Joe Black has just come back. Like, be like... Make it you work need to, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you need to prove why you're here. Or if even, like, he's going to be shit, then you could at least have two that are doing lesser and then two that are, like, doing more. So it's... Well, yeah, with something. Ellie. When Ellie was like, if it was up to me, I'd be like, I would have spoken straight from the jump. I'd have been like, if you don't feel comfortable with choreography then we will do a slightly pared down version for you two and you will stay, we will keep you on the sides, but mirrored doing something easier. Yeah. Like I would not, I wouldn't sacrifice myself. Um, and also as well, in the end, they're like, you don't even seem like a group anyway. So you yeah. could have been bum scatting, as <laughs> Ellie said. Legendary has taught us that ballroom is for everyone. Yeah. But I do, I did find it slightly jarring with Ellie. I, I with would the, just... I would disagree that Legendary did not... I feel like... That's what they told... They repeatedly told us that with, like, House of Ninja and stuff. I would argue that, like, ballroom culture can be inclusive. It can bring anyone in. But ballroom... Like, you need to be part of that community. The ballroom community and the Kiki community has extended out, like, rather than just being for black and Latinx queens and, tr- like, trans and gay people. It has extended further than that. But I think you still need to be part of the ballroom community. Like, House of Ninja are, like, one of the biggest houses mm. ever. Rather than, like, you're saying, like, some little 20-year-old gay man being like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I feel you. Moving over to the United King dolls, I just thought, wow, taste in that hat. Like, Giving you military gun. I will do whatever you tell me. Yes, <laughs> Your sir. Your disco needs no. <laughs> I was going to say, giving you Cheryl, but then I remembered... She's still a piece of racist garbage. <laughs> Disgusting! I don't want to live in a world where we don't remember that Cheryl Carr was a racist, so... Maybe we just bring it in every week. I did say, though, for good... I think Lawrence did well, because I think it must be so s- stressful to be not not a dancer in that team. That's how... I know exactly how it feels, because that's how I would feel, like, doing stuff with... When I'm the only one who's not a trained dancer, and everyone's, like, using mm. these French terms. I'm like... I don't know what a fucking I love how you say hard de beurre is or whatever. Hard de beurre, like a step of the butter. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I love how you say that French terms if we're just like all just being pretentious and speaking French. It's because of <laughs> ballet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like we're all like coming to rehearse. It's like today, it's manual. Um, and I don't think Ellie Diamond hid very well how little she wanted to be there in that group. And I, I feel it. Mm. I would have been livid it's a bit b team isn't it true like z team i'm sorry (laughs) looking for hot wigs in your local area right now let truffle pig wigs pair you with the perfect top to keep your head game on fire all night 
Use code CLIFFHANGERS for 50% off on truffleprintwigs.co.uk. Available in a variety of thicknesses and lengths. Cut and uncut. Or crimped for your pleasure. Truffle pig wigs. Hair care for sluts. It has come that time once again when we shout out one of our favourite queer businesses on here on Cliffhangers. Um, And this time it is everyone's favourite little sin hole. It is the glory down on Kingston Road. You've been there. You've passed out in the smoking area. Now, everyone obviously is madly missing community at this time, but the Glory has launched its online platform for people to connect uh, with Team Glory, but also with the community that the Glory brings called Glory TV. They are curating an online show full of your favorite queer artists um, and amazing digital performances. So you can head over to the Glory's Insta, which is at the Glory LDN to check out Glory TV. And also, please head over to their PayPal, which is paypal.me forward slash the Glory LDN, to also donate to them to help keep queer venues alive. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's time for mirror chats on elimination day. You know I love a mirror chat. You love a mirror chat. Don't I? My first thing, which I know you're not going to agree with because you are a hater, is, oh, there is something about hearing Scottish people saying, I've really liked working with your hen. Oh, that was so bad. Scottish! I've really liked working with your hen. Hen. Oh, hen. 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 I just love hearing. <laughs> My friend Sammy says that and I love it. Scottish people. Hen. It's just a fantastic term of endearment. I love it. Also, Bimini talking about the coronavirus illuminating the expendability of the arts. Come on. She's a queen with a thought. <sighs> She's just the greatest. I know. Really, like, she is really the queen. She is the people's princess. Mm-hmm. And I will not hear another word about it. Hate Zine, which is this kind of like political yeah. Instagram, did a whole post about her talking about all of this. Well, in the lockdown episode. But it's like, she's, she's mainstream, bitch. She's out here being the voice of for the freelance creatives and also her up on twitter as well talking about the financial impact that coronavirus has had on queens uh, and any performer that is freelance and about how unfair it was for rupaul to say about don't, don't wear h&m when we've been in a yeah. pandemic and about how tone deaf that was obviously we'll get onto that but i just thought you talking about late stage capitalism come on <laughs> like oh absolutely fantastic when lockdown first started uh, as truffle pig wigs we were shitting it because we were like yeah. If the queens aren't performing, then they're not going to need wigs. But they've been doing streaming shows. They've been buying wigs. They've been keeping us in warm clothes. So thank you to all the drag queens who have bought wigs of us during lockdown. Necessity is the mother of invention. And clearly everyone became a bedroom queen. That is Mm. no longer a cuss. One thing that I really picked up on is how much more fragile the atmosphere was now that they've returned. Mm. And I think that that's really symptomatic of the fact that they've just been sitting for seven months stewing over the impending return. And I think that obviously before they were just like, we're here, we're having a we're having a big old knees up. Now, because of the, I think because of the literal terror that coronavirus has brought, that it just seems like the stakes have got so much higher. And well, then, the fact that Veronica's not there because she's actually got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mirror chats just seemed, for the first time, much more like the American mirror chats where everyone's shitting themselves. Mm. Which was, I didn't like. I really don't like it, Kath. Then we head over to the runway. All those legs on RuPaul Charles and all that teeny tiny dress, I was very into it. All of them legs on Miss RPC. I see it so often, but every single time it shocks me. Yeah. Just like how, like how can one person, the fact that Naomi Smalls hops up on the stage and dares to call herself the legs, legs, what's on the menu. Like RuPaul is like her full body height in legs. Like it's, it's a mathematical impossibility. Also, we've now got Tia... And Simone with the most gorgeous oh. legs that have ever existed. So I'm sorry, Naomi, I'm, I think you better hang up those tights. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't... I, I think you're off menu now. We've moved to change how season. How <laughs> dare you? Ha- I I take... Hu- I'm you- doing this to wind you up. Please. <laughs> please. But please don't ever compare anything that Tia is bringing on that runway to Naomi Smalls. Naomi Smalls. I'm comparing the legs. She, she is a woman of talent, quality and energy. And I, I, I will not hear it. But obviously you can compare it to RPC, Lady Frack. I mean, that's fine. Michelle serving scales. I thought she just looked like mother of pearl, iridescent. 
Angel. Angel fantasy, yeah. <laughs> I think you need to write a couple of love letters into Miss Visage because you are, you're crushing hard, aren't you? I mean, probably send them to her hair and makeup team more than ah, <laughs> she Listen, long before the hair and makeup team, she is Michelle Visage because she, she was serving what? Face. Face. She's she's from the balls. Sure, you can really come for a lot of Michelle's very questionable views on drag, but Michelle's mentor was Willie Ninja. Like, come on. Stick that in your pipe and Literally, like, that's who taught her to walk. Like, come on, like... Okay, bitch. Like, that's more of a shout out than really anything that Ruth's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we open on the Eurovision, our first team up is... It's the United Kingdoms. The- I completely forgot that Graham Norton is the Eurovision host. I know, how and great. So, so sick to have Inception. him doing it and just love the beginning bit that's always like so cringe. Absolutely love it. Okay, what would be your thoughts on the UKD? Give you some just of that UKD. Firstly, UK Hun, what a absolute fucking banger. <laughs> Rip roar up. Absolutely couldn't agree more. And also I love as well the range of the songs that they do. Like you've got like the original and only bitch track, um, Read you, read you, Look at here. Yeah. And then you've got like, every single time they really bring like a completely different energy. Like, I am American is very like uplifting the Queen's a song for the bars. But then this is like camp. This is so British. This is, yeah. like, this is like a fucking Venga Boys song. Like, <laughs> it was just, yeah. Famously Dutch, but yeah. sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just thought it was absolutely fucking fantastic. I um, think the girls 100% should enter Eurovision with this, but then I, I thought I was told can't. that if the song's been released, you can't do it. But word on the GV is that apparently the Frock Destroyers are touted to be performing at Eurovision. There you go. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know the, I don't know the truth in that. I did read it on the interwebs. It's true! We've said it on the pod, <laughs> it must be I read it on the true. interwebs, yeah. Um, but apparently, yeah, the Frock Destroyers, because, I mean, their time in the sunshine is mm. probably coming to an end. I... Now that we've got... Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Bimini was giving me real vanilla vibes, the girl band Vanilla, if you oh! remember. No way, no, no way! I'll put a picture on the gram, that's... That's all she is. She's the most late 90s, early 2000s dream that I could ever ask oh, for. I just love her. Absolutely love her. All I wrote about Bimini was obsessed, but that's very, that's getting very embarrassing and basic. Yeah. You know? I'm obsessed with Bimini. I was going through, I was like, so Bimini looks like she's in vanilla, loved a horror's bodysuit, oh, tastes gorgeous for... in that hair. Lawrence, lovely message. <laughs> I put a horror was really serving um, Lady Miss Kia, that sort of like Pam Hogg. Mm. Um, just loved that. And also, I just love to see her sometimes, because she is so high concept, I'd love to see her just like paired back sometimes. Just serving you bodysuit and like flat hair. Mm. I just thought, that's it. Real girl, real boobs. Yeah, exactly. It kind of reminded me a bit of Got Mix, um, yeah. Lame yeah, yeah, bodysuit. Yeah, 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 yeah. My favourite bit is just the literal six seconds that they did when it was just a horror taste and Bimini pumping it down the runway. But she's like, <laughs> uh, she said, I'm the da 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 da. And then they just went, woom, 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 and walked down. I was like, that's. Abs- he loves a walk. It, it, it was absolutely sensational. Pumping it down that runway in an arrowhead three way. Fantastic. Visually, <laughs> formations, formations, it was formations. Visually gorgeous. Whatever the other team thought that they were doing is what this team delivered. Like, it was the perfect mix of current, but also really camp. Yeah. They fucking nailed it. Because, yeah. But like, I'm not always a fan of things if they're like super cheesy. Oh, I'm a cheese queen. But. This was just like the perfect balance. I thought it was just, oh, I just absolutely loved it. It's um, so funny, the contrast, like watching the judges' faces, like they're just really enjoying this, aren't they? And then they were when the it. other team came out, it's just fucking nooch. Um, Ahura's, even though Ahura was like, oh, I can't sing, can't dance, whatever. Like hers was just like, perfect. Okay, bitch. <laughs> yeah, hers was just perfect for her. I thought it, she doesn't need to be able to sing. Like just like what, that, that little just moment. She, I just thought it was just great, great, great for her. Um, I love as well Bimini's voice coming through. Like, <laughs> dang, dang. Well, I was really doing that. That voice is it's never going to go out of work, is it? No. That voice absolutely fantastic. And it was just such constant high energy. And then Banana Drama, thoughts? Well, yeah, they've all gone a lot more camp than pop stars, haven't they? Yeah. I thought Sister looked absolutely stunning. Clearly had lent her Florencia wig to Tia, I thought. I, that was my <laughs> first thought. I put, love Tia's wig. That's absolutely not hers. Yeah. And then I put uh, Florencia's question mark. Then it's, I, <laughs> I feel like I've seen Sister in that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a lovely wig. And the best she's ever looked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I thought as well, is that, I don't think that's Tia's dress. 
I don't think that's a Tia silhouette at all. And the way it cut on her leg as well, I think that's sister's sister's dress as well. Again, the sister to everybody. Yeah. Real sister, sister to everyone. Um, but... Joe's dress was, sorry, just a joke. I was like, someone lend that girl a pink dress stat. I can't believe that like there was... absolute mess. What the... She even knew it was a mess. She was like, oh, yeah, it's a bit weird. It's got these puffy sleeves. Like, what the fuck are you wearing she it said, for? She said, and I quote, it's so plain. Why did you bring it? Good one. Um... <laughs> I just put Rue was not having it from the jump. The first time, it was like 15 seconds in, the first time it cut to Rue, she was like, this shit on my show? I don't think. I said it looks like a performance by the Wiggles. (laughs) Ellie, I know that Rue said that I liked the outfit and it was the only one they did, but I just thought it was so plain. It looked like a plain version of Trixie in the girl band. Yeah, and that was rhinestoned. Um, the energy was so, so different for this one as well. You could pick up on it straight away. No unity. It felt tentative. It felt scared. Like It's wild that it's the same song and the two performances were so worlds apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was weird. And I, the, the thing that I was waiting for, that I was like, okay, this is not good. Um, but I was like, I think Tia is going to come in. Especially because I feel like in the uh, when they were recording, had been like, you smashed it. It said something that was like about Tia being good. Yeah. And then I thought, Tia was awful. I really don't like it, Kath. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be so negative, but just like, <laughs> her diction was so bad. I just couldn't, I actually couldn't understand a word of it. I had to go back and watch this entire performance with the subtitles on. Like, put a cork in it. Literally. <laughs> like, but if you can't, like... If I'm sitting 10 inches away from the screen watching it and I can't understand a word, like, that's a problem. Mm. Clearly, that's not going to be a marketable song that's going to go straight to number one on the UK iTunes. I don't think it's been released. I don't. I I don't (laughs) think they should. Um, One thing that I really want to open up to the floor, because I want to hear your thoughts on this, is Joe's performance style. I don't look at him and see, like, a, a drag performance, because I just see, like, it's him... In costume. Does mm. that make sense? Maybe it's just the kind of the difference between the cabaret and the yeah. non-cabaret world. Him not him staying as the Joe Black character and not moving into the girl band character is very reminiscent of Tammy Brown when they did their yes. girl brands. Yes, yes, yes. It's like if you're I it must be a hard line to walk. Like, I don't want to change who this personality is and I don't want to change who I am, but then also like you want to do well in the challenges. It's kind of a tricky it's thing. It's got to be adaptable. Such a deep character. Yeah, like that. it's got to be adaptable. You've got to have. I I think there's been so many queens that have come before them that have shown that like this is where my character is. Someone that has a really strong sense of character is Katya. Mm. But the nuance of her character that means that she's still adaptable. Like in Read You Wrote You, it was a bitch track, and she gave you sexy. She get that was like her character then. But she also does dumb and stupid, and Tan she also with does. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She also does like silly childish and like, Mm. and it, there's, she still retains her character of Katya at all times, but there has to be a level of flexibility within it to show like different shades of that character. And I think that's where maybe like this, where my sort of like confusion comes with that I don't really feel like we see much variety. Yeah. And the, in, in the performance of the girl group and then the lip sync and then everything that they've shown in the workroom and stuff, it's just all been one flat character and it's not it's not very vibrant to me that's my impression yeah i think it works comparing a show you get to come out and do a couple of little numbers and just kind of live your fantasy mm-hmm. for a bit but maybe it doesn't translate to the main stage of drag race yeah absolutely did you notice at the end that rue did not clap oh yeah and i thought that's the fact that they showed that they did a everyone was clapping and it just went to her and she wasn't clapping i thought the bitch ain't happy no, got it. <laughs> um, and then we head over to the runway. Yes. And for the runway, it was a day at the seaside. What would you have done? Well, my first, first, first thought was deck chairs. But then I thought... Deck chairs? Simone's just done that with her red and white stripey. Yeah. Uh, so then I was thinking Punch and Judy. And I was oh, thinking some kind of one. emancipated 2021 Judy. She ain't getting punched no more. She's a fucking dominatrix. And working that in somehow. Okay. Wooden Into face, it. kinky boots. I don't know. Wooden face. Would you be, like be on strings? Like a puppet on a string? Maybe. Ooh, we would have workshopped it. Well, that's a good thing with just thinking about it. You can have come with a crazy idea, but you never have to follow it through. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now. What um, would you have done? My first idea is like a really sort of, I don't want to say vaudevillian, because I don't want you to jump to sort of like Jinx, well, Jinx Monsoonie, but like a fortune teller. More of like a fortune teller, like a crone 
like grey hair, like contact lenses, like. And that's a day at the seaside to you. Well, yeah. Uh, Punch and Judy dominatrix t- twenty twenty one. Well, I've rehashed it, but Punch and Judy is a classic British seaside. So it's fortune teller. Is it? Yeah, like a fortune teller at the seaside. Okay. That's like such a classic thing. Okay. <laughs> like they have the booth with the fortune teller in. I can only think of that in like arcades in American films on the pier. But that's a pier on an arcade on the beach. Yeah, but not in the, not British. I didn't. It doesn't have to be British. Sister, sister was going to do Pamela Anderson. Yeah, but she didn't because she knew it was wrong. But well, anyway, whatever. I was going to do that, but I thought actually, fortune teller. I feel like maybe it's been done. But that was my initial thing. But then I thought actually, I'd want to do something that was funny. Like fortune teller is just like like a costume weather. But so what I would do, I would do some something like super cute sort of like bikini or like period sort of like swim look and then just like all over bright red body paint and like uh sunburn like the sunglasses oh have like, the little napkin with the four knots on yeah, your head. yeah 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 <laughs> and then maybe like have like have like an arm thing where i've like fallen asleep with a book or something and then when i turn around have that someone's written something on my back in, yeah in sunburn and just be yeah be like walking like really i like really that sunburned. again reference to tan with you yeah Although this has been burned with you. Turn with you. With Turn you. With, with you. With you. Uh, <laughs> so, first up on the runway, we have Ms. Bimini Bumbolesh. I screamed. I'm not going to scream now, but I screamed Angel when she came out. And my boyfriend came running in like, are you OK? I'm like, yes. <laughs> this is, I, can I just preface this with saying this is the highest scores that I've ever given on a runway. I absolutely loved so many, so many in these runways. I think I, I concur. Yeah. Um, so Bimini Bamboulash, what was she giving you? What did you give her? Well, I liked the sort of Pat style makeup again. Yeah, I, one of the first things I put is this is very mm. Galliano for Dior, like 100%. This must have been one of the references. I loved it, but I only gave an 8.5 because I'm a stickler for the categories and I did not see a day at the seaside in pa- powder blue lace, sorry. Um, I think that's... That's my opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, no. I was going to say I think that's very valid, but I think probably what she was going for is that she was thinking everyone's going to see like a more sort of like forties, fifties day at the seaside, sort of like classic like wartime day at the seaside. Whereas she was obviously going for like Victoriana, like when they didn't go in bikinis and stuff. Just like that's what I saw. But I do also maybe think that she had planned that for something else. Mm-hmm. It was like day at the seaside, sure. Um, I don't know when this coronavirus is going to come back. I want to be pussy stunting all well, my best exactly. looks. Um, I absolutely loved it and I per that also it was giving me real have you ever seen the photo of Erin O'Connor in the Dior Hawk tour show where she's like the ghost of Dior Dang. the ghost of Miss Dior it's very much giving me that sort of face was gorgeous she looked like a little doll um, and I I gave her nine fantastic yeah next up we have Miss Tace that little blonde mullet behave oh uh, oh my god house of peluca again the same as really uh, mr peanut trans really? Pan- absolutely hat. loved it absolutely loved it uh what did you give taste i gave taste a nine <sighs> gorgeous angel mermaid and i loved would you pull that crap with a net <laughs> <laughs> i gave taste a 10 <laughs> yeah. excuse me excuse me that's a 10 i know obviously it was just a bodysuit and coat when it came around the corner i just thought that is that's a bit of me. I just loved it. Next up, a horror. A horror. An actual bag of chips. <laughs> Literally. Um, thoughts. Need to know your thoughts. Uh, I loved the giant fork. I could, I had like uh, sense memories of the vinegar coming off it and like the dryness of the wood on my yeah, tongue. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I thought, I'm going to shout and scream for this. I gave this also a 10. This is a day at the seaside, elevated with silhouette, with concept. Everything. Like this is exactly what you want for someone designing. And the fact that she made it herself, mm. designing something around a concept for the runway, I thought was fucking perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. I had to get past my violent, violent hatred of ketchup for this. <laughs> Uh, I just thought it was to. super cute, super British seaside. Um, I marked it an eight just because eight. Um, I thought it was maybe realming on the kind of like wacky Manila esque. How dare you! It had it's impeccable... literally an outfit made of food, which is but it had impeccable design. Like there was no, silhouette. Yeah, I still gave the bitch an eight. <sighs> Slander. Slander. I gave it a 10. You're going to lose your mind at who I gave a 10 to. <laughs> no, I know. I think I know who it's going to be. I think I know who it's going to be. Lawrence Cheney as a whole tugboat. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Lawrence Cheney a nine because I thought it was incredibly well made. I thought the shape of it was fantastic. I love that she was like, uh, I love the no diving bit on her bum. And if 
it would have truly been a perfect one if I hadn't had to hear someone go, yeah, boy. Uh, <laughs> but I do love any nautical pun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I loved the, the, thought the wig was very nice. That was by her. Just loved the like, yeah, face yeah, yeah, framing yeah, yeah, webs. Yeah. Again, very manila very... Oh. Kiki costume. Is, is, I thought she's given me body, she's given me face, she's given me hair, and she's also given me. They were old maiden type. <laughs> so I gave her a seven. And what were the shoes? How did I miss out on the shoes? She's like a cheeky 0. 0.5 inch or something. She loves a biscuit kicker, doesn't she? <laughs> Honestly. And then next up, we have. This is going to be your 10, isn't it? Ellie Diamond. Ellie Diamond. <laughs> I'm loving how much they're thinking outside the box. I. The, the first seagull, thing, the, the first thing I thought when I saw this is, I bet you're going to absolutely love this. I actually didn't. <gasps> <laughs> it was fine. I gave it a seven. I um, just thought this is the this is the real Lukey Luck mixture of like demented, but also it's quite glam. Um, I said I have to give her props, but again, they were old maiden type. They of weren't shoes. shoes. She was wearing webbed. Feet. I don't give a fuck. Put a fucking bigger heel on that, and I would have liked some shit on the feet as well. I've written. <laughs> Just a bit of like poo, white poo on the feet would have been good. I gave her an eight, but it was only because I thought the face was absolutely spectacular. I was just like, as soon as she came out, I was like, she looks gorgeous. How is she a gull? And she looks <laughs> it's like just like the eye detail with the feathers and the wig as well. I just thought it was all, although IMO would have loved if she'd kind of gone like a bit more mohawky on the fridge. But um, is it drag? What, what do you mean? You are the queen of, oh, don't say that it's costumey. That's drag, honey. She was dragged out. Okay. Next up, we have Miss Tia Maria. I just thought, oh, Tia. Can I be real with you? I wish you would. I gave this a two, and I, <laughs> and I nearly gave it a one. I actually thought this was quite insulting. Mm. When Especially you... after she's been like, I'm stepping up my game. Like, stepping where? You're in a mascot outfit. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and really just wrap this up very quickly, because I, don't, I just don't want to be really rude about her. But pack it up, Mr. Whippy. Like, I'm not, that wasn't it at all. A cherry? Where's your flake? It better be where the fuck I think it is, up your ass, because... <laughs> but also, like, the ice cream didn't look like... Like, what was it? Like, white neoprene? I, yeah, I gave it a two, which is definitely my lowest. Have you given a two yet? Yeah, Ginny Lemon in a tube, pink tube. You think Ginny Lemon's pink tube was comparable to in that? In a construction sewing challenge, yes. Wow. Yeah. So what I you... follow the rules. I take who I like out of it slightly. So but... what did you give her? Tia. I gave her a four because I thought her makeup would improve. Hmm. Sister, and sister. What are the chances? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Thoughts on this? I thought the seagull in the hair was a nice touch, but the, like, ketchup skirt was, like... Ugh. It's hard to think of it without having seen a horrors be so good. Like, maybe I would have liked it more, but it was just such... It was like um, when Trinity came out in her Madonna... Yeah, yeah, look. yeah, yeah. Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, um, the Met Madonna... Guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Um... And also when Shay came out in the same as... Uh, do you remember Shay's construction and wig was much nicer than Peppermint's? Peppermint, yeah. Uh... Yeah, so it's just like, it was very unfortunate. I might have liked it more if I had not seen a Horrors, but I gave it a six. I but yeah, it... I thought the seagull was a nice touch. I gave it a six as well. I thought that actually hers was less obvious. I thought that the way that she'd constructed it with um, that sort of like red vinyl, I thought it was more abstract the way that she'd put it together. But I don't know, the shape kind of threw me. Next up we have... Joe Black. Mm, that's a 10. <laughs> I, I, I can't hear this. I had to give it a I 10. Refuse. When I came out, I was like, that is British seaside condensed in an outfit. The like I've been on Brighton Pier trying to fucking walk down, just like getting whipped with like wind and rain and stuff. And to me, that, that was exactly it. Let me tell you what that was. That was an outfit that she put some things about the pier on. That was, I can't believe you gave that a 10. She was in a Margaret Thatcher yellow two-piece skirt suit. She had thick black tights on at the beach. If you're cold... She's, not, she's just walking down the pier. But if it's windy and you're cold, then make that part of your outfit. Like it just, it doesn't, to me, it just looked like things thrown on an existing outfit that she's Obviously got. it's windy because and it's cold. That's why she's wearing tights and that's why her hair's wind blown. But anyway, agree to disagree. We just move on. I know, six. Not having it. <laughs> The thing is, it was a sick concept. That like that was such a good idea, but it just was executed. Did you see Cherry Valentine had a similar idea? That was her look. <gasps> no. Um, yeah, all like wind blown and and I liked like... the lash as well. And then the United Kingdoms are announced as the winner, and which to me was just so obvious. Like there was no way that. However, I would have liked an overall winner. Read obviously Bimini because I Bimini. feel like it kind of takes away the prestige of the badge if just every like if. 
four people get one on the one. I don't... We should have a winning team and then the winner of the episode gets a badge. Sure, sure, sure. But, I, which they do normally do. But I think maybe they watched it and they just thought, you know, these were all really fucking good. I, don't I think, think they should have said that then, like, we couldn't decide on a winner. You yeah, were all so yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they normally do. They'll be like, you're the winning team, but the one, the standout was. So I think that maybe that was just sort of given. Mm. But I would say that the strongest one of the team was Tace. I thought Tace had the best rap. And she, I loved the performance that she was giving. I was going to take my eyes off Bimini the, the, literally the whole time. Is that because you were in love with Bimini? I think so. <laughs> yeah. um, but then I also thought Horror was fantastic. And I thought, special shout out to Lawrence as well, who kept up with three incredible performers. So, I mean, I do think it was fair that they all got one. Um, but annoying that Lawrence got one because she's really stacking up them budgets, <laughs> isn't she? And of course, that means that all the banana drama are up for elimination. Well, they deserve to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, thoughts on this? First of oh. all, I'd like to just say, how dare RuPaul make jokes about the world ending when her fracking is a major part of that? Yeah. What the fuck? It's ending quicker because of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Outrageous. I knew that Ru was super hot from the way that they spoke in Ellie's critique. I could tell straight away that I was like, this, okay, there's a problem here because... First of all, Rue never really speaks in critique. Like she lets all of the bad, all of the bad critiques be dealt out by the other judges so that she can remain the most beloved fracker of the world. Mm. Like, and she never really speaks up unless it's like she wants to like really make a point. And so I was just quite surprised that she was going to even say anything anyway. But then when she said to Ellie, when she was kind of like, I did like her outfit, which is not what I can say about the rest of the I was like, okay, she's there is Ooh, chilly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um and but when he can we talk about Calling Tia regional. <laughs> now, for people that have listened to Cliffhangers before, for us, regional is not <laughs> it's not something that we uh, would want to be called. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's exactly that's why she said cuss. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that is a real highbrow cuss for us. Um, and if if RuPaul called me regional, I would. I don't think I'd ever recover. Well, that. my favourite bit was uh, later on in the judging when Emanike said that her look was just mad local. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's the UK version of regional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mad local, um, man. Uh, when he was like, if you had my team of 50 people, it was like... I, I love that, that he does... He references that he's like, I I wouldn't even know how to get into drag. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't I don't know whether you've seen photos of me from before, like, but when I did my own drag, I mean, I, had to, call it, Runway. I had to call it gender fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like Sister Sister had a very good overall critique from Rue. I felt like they like Rue did like what yeah, Sister did. Yeah, she was top of the bottom. Yeah, in the challenge. And so I thought I felt quite quite okay for her. I felt like yeah. she was safe. Right, we need to get into the real nitty gritty. What about Joe Black ratting on himself and saying H&M? In it. So stupid. Just be like, oh, this is a hand-me-down that my grandmother sewed together. Absolutely. No, you just be like, do you know what? I stuck more with the colour theme and I, th- I should have thought about it more. That was stupid. But I mean, like, there is just no fucking excuse. That outfit will truly, it'll go alongside Cynthia Lee Fontaine's roller girl um, in the little shorts. I really hate it, Cathy. Um, it'll go alongside Alyssa Edwards' tango dress. Um, and Apocalopolyptical Jiggly Caliente. Jiggly Caliente, legs falling off, bacon foil, hot potato. <laughs> so what were your thoughts on Rue coming for H&M that hard? The stock's plummeting as he roars. <laughs> I don't want to see any fucking H&M. I absolutely love it when she loses her shit and screams at the <laughs> girls. <Yeah. laughs> it's my favourite. When she was... What was the, like, the really... I don't want to hear any fucking goddamn excuses. Yes. I know how to act uh, to the vixen. <laughs> but then also she's like... Got really sick of everyone like throwing their fucking wigs on the ground and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love those moments. It's always shocking when he shouts. Like every time, I mean, he's done it so many times, as, as you mentioned, but like every single time I'm like, whoop, like, oh. It's because normally he's so composed. Yeah. So when he loses it, it's like, ah, it's like um, when like their parent that's normally safe that shouts at you, yeah. they use your full name, you're like, oh, dear, I'm really mm-hmm. in trouble now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when it went to Untouched, they absolutely screamed and cried at Taste going, Butlins, let me hear you scream. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a fantastic moment, wasn't it? Um, Ahura, queen of the eye roll, rolling her eyes so far back she could see her brain <laughs> literally the whole time. And she was Well, like, yeah, discussing the fact that pre-corona, sister had a Pamela Anderson outfit for this. 
Very interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. I wasn't here for the Pass Agnes of Sisters saying, does it make you uncomfortable that I completely disregard your outfit and don't remember it? Yeah. Do you know what I thought? it seemed fake. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that she's way too hot for this not to be true. I feel like maybe maybe she's masking the fact that she is actually really fucking pissed off and it is like a complete coincidence and she's like, fuck, she did it better and that she's not really uh, representing them feelings very well. But I just thought she was so angry that it just really made it look like she kind of did feel a bit cooled out. Mm, although I do kind of, I did believe her when she said, well, no, it's because I take my creativity very seriously yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. got reason and rhyme for this. So for you to say I've copied it is offensive. And I she thought- is a very like creative queen so i just thought it would be way too stupid of her to copy a horror a horror is obviously going to construct it really well mm. and if she'd seen that it just seems like i don't think sister's that stupid to just be like oh yeah i'll copy her idea surely hers will be shit no i love not. taste piping in with like oh as if you didn't see it's a giant ship in the corner <laughs> <laughs> like the one on your shoulder uh, bullshit sister bullshit <laughs> <laughs> I love that. and then we head back over to the judges the bottom two after deliberation are revealed to be Tia and Joe, who lip sync to the communards version of Don't Leave Me This Way. Oh. Little Jimmy Somerville. Oh, which is just a, a, such a banger. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Banger. Absolute banger. Um, I put my first thing was that this is kind of the Astina. For me, this is kind of the Astina tea all over again. Like, I didn't really think Tia was remarkable in this lip sync. <laughs> And I just thought she was better than Joe, who was poor, I would say. I only had one comment to say about the whole lip sync, which was Tia did such an obvious like comedy drawn out lead up to that little flip forward roll thing, whatever she did. So how the hell does right as she's landing, Joe Black do a little forward roll into it? One thing that really marks that the Queen has lost their lip sync for me is when they become hyper aware of what the other person is doing. Drag is not a contact sport. And the reason that she did that is because she saw that she was rolling forward and she dived in front of her. Yeah, it's like, Like, what's going on? Like, that is, and and to me, as soon as she did that, I was like, I I mean, obviously, there was no way she was going to win anyway, but like, as soon as she saw that, I was like, nah. Do you want to heal in your eye? It's happened before. Truly. If you put me on a stage and I'm lip syncing for my life, that person does not exist for the next four and a half minutes. Like, I don't care what they're doing, but like, you are, by hook or by crook, your eyes are going to be on me for the whole time. Unless and, it's Raja and Carmen. Oh, God, unless we're going to have some <laughs> dirty, erotic moment together. But, like, what I, I didn't get is that he, he was so concerned about what, and even when Tia was doing all of that shenanigans at the end, he was just standing there watching. Mm. And I was like, you're so concerned about what Tia's doing in this lip sync for your life. Like, you need to be worried about yourself, not about what Tia's doing. And that's when I was like, Tia doesn't, you don't exist to Tia. She can't see you. And that's why she's going to stay. Mm. And, and I, I was a bit disappointed with that lip sync, if I'm honest. Which is uh, not nice to say. Yeah, unfortunately for Tia, all the other lip syncs that have happened, apart from the one she's been in, have been really, really, really good. Mm. So Tia was the winner for this week, which, I mean, was, was pretty... The winner good. of the losers. Winner of the losers, <laughs> yeah. The best of a bad bunch. Um, and, yep, yeah, so this takes us neatly on to season three Dreamcast. You know her, we love her, Juno Birch, pastel icon, trans artiste, PC gamer. Oh, She's got PC it all. PC gamer, yeah. <laughs> the fantastic Sims YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I really need to say too much. If you don't know her, get to know her. And if you do you know, know her, her, you know I'm right. You know her, grow up. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to second that. No, I will give my own, but also just like Juno Birch. <laughs> and one person that I would absolutely love to see is Gloom. <laughs> She is self-identifying as a big left-wig bitch clown from a small right-wing beach town. (laughs) Um, Just love her. Also, like, best friends with sister, um, which that is the sisterhood. Literally a sister for all. Love, love, love her aesthetic. She's someone that just... uh, just a queen that doesn't take herself too seriously. Her lip syncs as well. Like she's like she's someone that like really fantastically integrates uh, spoken word with her performances. And she gives you real glam but also real pig in a wig. And I just think she's fucking fantastic. So go over to at glue the queen underscore on Insta and go show her some love. Go add her up and go throw some hearts underneath her. 
So we've come to the time where we want to hear the rose and thorn of the episode. Ooh, do you want to go first? What was sure. your rose? My rose was Bimini's performance. Oh, of course. You. I think at this point it's safe to say that you spend half of your time frotting between Michelle and half of your time <laughs> between Bimini. Um, and my thorn was just that no one voted for Cherry. That really yes. sat sour with me. Sour Cherry. My rose is... <laughs> Rue losing his shit. I just <laughs> at, like, hook it to my veins. I love it. It happens once in a blue moon, but when it does, oh, oh God, it is so fantastic, isn't it? I just love to see that carefully um, constructed facade break down. Mm. You just get to see a tiny glimmer of a real person mm. rather than this strange fracking monster. Um, and I just love it when she just goes fucking acker and that was it. Um, and then my thorn was the girls arguing over the chips. I love you, Ahura. Mm. I love you, sister. I don't like to see sister on sister crime. No, I don't want to um, see the girls fighting. Um, and then on to my favourite part of the week. <laughs> the wigs. The zinger and the minger. Hit me. Zinger takes his blonde mullet. Me too! <laughs> <laughs> so fantastic, wasn't it? And that sort of like sandy blonde colour. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And my minger wig would have yeah. to be RuPaul's... You're in yellow. <laughs> that was mine too. Why are you so obsessed with me? So simpatico. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That, it, first of all, it was a hard front. That was like serving real like Wimbledon ball. Highlight a yellow gland. It was, I mean, on Bimini and Ginny, absolutely sensational. On Rue. Maybe you've got to be Envy to pull it off. Yeah. Lo- <laughs> a lovely non bind harvester. It, was, <laughs> it, it just wasn't. It, the colour wasn't hitting on Rue for me. No. Um, so yeah, I agree. That was the absolute minger as well. I wonder who did that. <laughs> I wonder who wrestled that up for old Ruru. And then we get a little glimpse into next week, which is the Snatch Game. <laughs> which, let's be honest, that is just like the highlight of every season, isn't Plus it? Plus the GC. My rose was nearly that GC's on next week's episode. <laughs> um, so that I'm very excited about Snatch Game. Shall we do a quick? Super swift rundown of thoughts and bullet points from the Lockdown Queens episode. First of all, if it was me, I would be freaking out that they wouldn't bring us back. That would be oh my, my God, main fear, that they're just going to be like, do you know what? Fuck it. Terrifying. <laughs> do you know what? We'll just, uh, we'll just crown someone. Yeah. Imagine. <laughs> you're, you're all winners. <laughs> you're a winner, baby. Um, very into the little purple Mary Quant style earrings on Ellie. Yes, very that, very that. Um, very into Bimini telling us that Daniel Bedifield didn't write that song for no reason. We are going to get through this. <laughs> I mean, really just the voice of a generation always bringing you the um, the P, the PMA that you need. Yeah. Uh, Cherry Valentine, an actual angel. I didn't expect oh. this episode to be emotional. I Wasn't thought it was just going to so be like a shitty hitting. filler yeah. one. Just like, I mean, half of it was a bit stupid. But seeing our little girl just like out here watching people die so. Like, and talking so, so eloquently, like, I thought that there might be an element of, like, sensationalism about it. Not, sorry, that's unfair, but, like, I thought that they might have really sad music behind it and be like, when I've been out on the corona, that, like, it was just, like, Cherry Valentine sitting in her car, like, just talking about it really... Candidly. Really candidly and really open in. That's what I think was so, like, so core-shaking about it. I loved her um, kinky hoovering boots. <laughs> yes, a, a nod back to her... Breaking free. Yeah. Ariana Grande. Uh, loved seeing all the pets. Very <laughs> into that. I love seeing their houses. And I, I mean, I, oh, but can I just say, Tia, you know you're going to be on the BBC and you can't even be bothered to tidy your room up. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. Very messy. Um, loved Bimini doing the African Grey Chanel. Look ah, at that. That seems like a Chanel. million years ago, yeah. doesn't it? That was oh all the rage. Gosh, that was fantastic. So many moustaches. I mean, let the hair grow, girl. <laughs> like, when you've got a wax from literal from ear to asshole, like, every day, like, you would be growing out all of your hairs. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear Tace narrate a cooking show. Oh, yeah. I don't really want her recipes, oh, but I'd love to just have her do God. the voiceover. I don't believe in food shaming anyone because, listen, different strokes for different folks, but... I was like, okay, the, the noodles are bad enough. I was like, I swear to fucking God, if she pours the sauce into that sandwich, I'm going to fuck, I'm going to lose my shit. And it was when she slapped it and all the, that honestly, like it made me gag. Yeah. I thought you are. Like when babies have food around their mouths. Yeah. 
it absolutely fucking rank. I was here for the carb on carb on carb, but I wasn't here for a soggy bread. No. Um, another thropple in the franchise. I know. All the pastel days. I can't get one boyfriend and, and oh, ginny has got two. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, how awful about Ellie's family home and the fact she had to register as homeless. What the fuck? Absolutely awful. But thank fuck that they managed to rehome her. Mm. Like that was when before I saw that bit and they were like, I've had to register as homeless. I was like, get the girl on the blower. Come down to London, Ellie. <laughs> Come sleep on me. Like, I just, I just thought this is fucking insane. And then, yeah, thank God they at least gave her a new home for mm. not only her stuff, but Ellie's stuff as well. Yeah. And I hope um, eventually the family can all live together again. Well, Isn't maybe, that? maybe when uh, Jizu closed a window, he opened a door and maybe this, like they said, it's their first time actually having yeah. the opportunity to live alone. And yeah, I, I mean, I fucking hope that all, the whole of Ellie's family is rehomed and they're safe and sound. Going back to Bimini, just being a role model for the children, like highlighting how disposable like performers industry is. And it's like, like we know it because we're in the world, but I think there's a lot of people that didn't know that. And the fact they're pointing out that like drag queens don't get furloughs and stuff. Yeah, of she course. just was so, she explained so it so, and like, yeah, yeah, just great, love her. So do they do the confessionals once it's all wrapped? Because why the hell is yeah. Cherry talking about lockdown in a shiny red coat? Yeah, I think the the show producers will know when they want to put a talking head in mm. for like for like the flow of the episode. So they'll say like, here we will have someone talking about blah 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 blah, and it'll be literally as rehearsed as. I mean, let's message one of the cows, find it out, and they'll go back and they'll show a horror bit, and they'll go right, a horror. What did you think of when Astina said this? And then she'll go, mm. when, blah 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 blah, and she'll talk about it in real time. I think. Um, but then I do know that some of the girls before have spoken about doing their pickups at the end of the day. Well, yeah, and also because when she she's like, we're back. So you wouldn't be like, we're back if you've done it all at the end. Oh, no, they can't have done it all at the end as well because Bimini's face was different this time. Yeah, so, yeah, very confused about that. My last note on the lockdown special was just every time they cut to Bimini's life, she's just pussy stunting on the <laughs> whether it's her acrobatics or her looks that did you see touche as well up, dude. yeah went there loved shout it. out to touche i loved that that you saw a little little glimpse of um costa del Tottenham. that's the one yeah love to see that well i think that's uh so we've got time for this week my little Let's wrap it up. Um, bit of bat poo yeah <laughs> hey okay right so we will see you next week see ya bye see ya, guys. 